hear you say, but what if I get tired along the way? And he says, I'll carry you again.
thank you for your presence. We yield to you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in this conference. By the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I tell you, um, I was getting ready to come up here, and you know, I was focused on announcements and things I got to say. But when you get up here and you yield, you're in big trouble because I just felt like laying on the ground and just so nobody else could do the announcements. <laughs> That was just felt too good. It was like a washed over me, man. It was awesome. How's everybody in Wapan? All right. Those of you in the overflow right there, you're loved. You're valued. You just were a little late. <laughs> but we love you. <laughs> a little later than these guys, anyway. Um, uh, thank you, Pastors Wayne and Lisa, for opening up your church. Uh, I want to I want to share everybody get their study guide uh, how to minister to the sick. This is powerful and the CD that's inside. I am the God that heals you. You want to listen to this CD over and over and over and over again. Uh, Kevin has a lot of great things on his heart for this conference. So I want to share a couple things. On Friday nights we'd like to take a little more time because there's a lot going on in the ministry. This morning. Uh, you may or may not know, you'll see it later. This morning, Kevin and some of the pilots were out in Oshkosh, and he was flying the fighter plane around, the military jet. And um, did anybody happen to see that? If you live in the Oshkosh area, there's a jet flying overhead. That was Kevin up there. Yeah, and I'm telling you, those kids were so touched. It was so powerful. Most of the conferences that we go to, we invite a select number of children to come, and they even got to wash the. I'm talking about a fighter plane. They got the. They got to wash the jet, the military jet, I should say. They got to wash it and dry it, and and, and, and look into the cockpit where Captain Kevin was. And so, that's what I don't know what you were doing at 9 a.m. But uh, uh, Kevin was flying a jet. So, I'm just telling you, uh, he's made it clear to the staff. The Lord has spoke to him that you know a big part of this ministry is about the children. And so we want to keep focused. That's the next generation of prophetic warriors and so on and so forth. So um, that was, that's what happened this morning. I want to give you a couple updates on what's about to happen, uh, where Kevin and Kathy are going to be soon. We have, um, in September, we have the Dalton, Georgia conference, where uh, is going to be our next graduation. Uh, Pastor Mike may talk about that. And then we're going to do a one-night event in San Antonio. And then we're off to Santa Maria, California. And then we're going to do our European tour, Zurich, Switzerland, Cape Town, South Africa, and, and in Germany. We're going to do a European tour there. It's going to be powerful. Then we have a Puerto Rico outreach that's going to be wonderful. It's going to be a lot of outreach there, a lot of ministry to the uh, poor community there in Puerto Rico. We're excited about that. And then just posted uh, recently, we're going to do a one-nighter in Texarkana in, in November. So please... Uh, uh, pay attention to the events where we have so many wonderful things going on and it's public knowledge now uh, Kevin's going to New York next year he's actually never done that before uh, and so we're going to New York uh, hopefully the Long Island area for all you northeasterners uh, so come on uh, visit us and, and uh, we we're about to book Phoenix Arizona and a couple other places for next year so we're not slowing down a lot of good things coming I want to point a couple things out to you Around the church, you'll see these right here, these prayer cards. There's a box there, there's a box there, there's a few boxes around, and Kevin and Kathy are praying over these themselves. So if you find a box, go ahead and write a prayer request on there, and on the back, you can also share a testimony. You know, keep it short, not a testimony, a testimony right here, you know. <laughs> you need to be able to tell your testimony in about two minutes. Anyway, there's a prayer request card, and we have stacks and stacks of these that Kevin and Kathy are praying over, so feel free to find one of these later. Uh, that would be great as well. A couple other things. Uh, this is hot off the press. This is available nowhere at the moment except for Wapan. Uh, Kevin was able to bring 50, uh, how, how many? 100 of these. And it's the Holy Fire Trilogy. Now, if you heard Kevin talking about it already, there's three books in here. Uh, in his image, friend of God, in the kingdom of God. And 
uh, there's a couple things that the devil has fought Kevin on more than anything since he started the ministry, and this is one of them. I've read all three of these thoroughly. Changed my life. If you want to live in the holiness of God, the purity of God, the fire of God every day in the presence of God, you got to get this set. I'm telling you, they're only available here physically in Wapan to, uh, this weekend, but then I'm told that sometime next week you can order them online. So there's a special price for them here only, and uh, you can go to the book table and get these. This, this Holy Fire series is powerful. I'm telling you, I know it's a trilogy. You will not be disappointed. You will be encouraged. There was one, uh, there was one chapter in particular, I don't remember which of the trilogy, that I had to put the book down and just go pray. I had to go deal with some things. And it's not just about holiness. It's about being uh, what it takes to be a friend of God. How many want to know? All right, but get the series. Also, uh, a couple other things. We have a Wapan uh, worship CD out there. So uh, you want to get a hold of that. And also, uh, Pastor Chris, if you could help me, uh, from my home country of Concord, North Carolina, these are brand new. Uh, the Concord, North Carolina worship uh, album just came out. And it's just now available here. I was talking to Jason uh, and, and uh, some of the musicians. This, this, they had so much fun doing this. They tried to fit everything, squeeze it all on one CD. This is powerful. It's off the charts, and it's my home country. But uh, we, uh, Kevin wanted to give some away free. So if you want one, raise your hand. It's instru- <laughs> you might want to go pray for a while, Chris. <laughs> Just start handing them out. <laughs> For those of you online, we love you, but this is why you got to come to a conference. You never know what Kevin and Kathy are going to do. All right, they're all gone. Sorry. But you can purchase them at the table. Um, uh, one more important announcement before we receive the offering is um, tomorrow morning, Kevin's been doing something very special. I think it started in Nashville. Tomorrow morning, he's going to have what's called Coffee with Kevin. And uh, so bring your coffee, if you're allowed to in this church. Yes. You're allowed to bring your coffee in here. And Kevin's going to literally walk around uh, and, and just talk about short little snippets of things that are on his heart. Just going to hit you with it. And, and it's going to be coffee with Kevin. You're going to feel like it's one-on-one, I'm telling you. So you want to get here uh, at 9 a.m. There's no worship in the morning. So you want to be in your seat by 9 because uh, Kevin's going to start ministering coffee with Kevin before he gets into some of the other teaching. Amen. You with me? It's going to be these powerful little things that Kevin's going to walk around and do. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, all right, we're ready to receive an offering. Amen. <clears throat> if you um, if you know this ministry at all, the expectation on Kevin's heart is that you you are ready to give so hilariously that you're about ready to roll on the floor and laugh because you're that excited. You're that happy on the inside. You're not, you don't have this death grip on your finances. You're ready to say, Lord, I'm just willing to give you whatever I need to give you. You put, you put it on my heart, Lord, what you want me to give in this offering. And I know you follow Kevin, and I know that's what you've done already. You've already purposed in your heart uh, what to give. And th- I don't think we've ever took an offering over like a minute and a half. Uh, we don't believe in hour-long offerings in this ministry. So... You already know what to give. You already, the Lord already purposed in your heart. But thank you. Thank you for being a part. And uh, maybe in, in the next two days, we're going to be talking about where some of the offering is going to uh, uh, the widows and single moms and uh, uh, the uh, uh, different people that we're reaching out to. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give, to be part of kingdom giving. And, Lord, we think of that kingdom giving as part of kingdom living. And, Lord, we just thank you that that we have the opportunity to sow into good soil, things that you're doing all over the world. And, Lord, we we pray that everybody in this room, everybody in the sound of my voice, Lord, that is suffering financially, Lord, that you bring breakthrough, that you turn everything around, Lord, and you make things right for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Pastor Chris. Well, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Oh, come on. I said, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. There we go. All right, you guys calm down. You're getting all excited and stuff. Well, I know Kevin is ready to go over there. I could feel the power of God over there by him, so I'm going to be real quick. Um, Well, I I don't know if you heard, but I get to help with the Warrior Pantry and the Warrior Outreach. 
and it was on Kevin and Kathy's heart for this weekend to put some uh, bags of things together uh, for the homeless, some homeless bags. So we have gloves and socks, and his book's going to go in there as well, um, and also some book bags for the kids for uh, school supplies and things like that. So if you want to help with that, which I know we have some awesome people in here that want to help, uh, tomorrow morning at 830, we'll meet in the foyer and we'll figure it out, okay? We will have tables or something, but we'll figure it out. But tomorrow morning at 830, um, we're going to put some bags together. We're going to put some, uh, you know, school supplies together with book bags and some little surprises and everything. So if you want to help tomorrow uh, at 8.30 a.m., and I want to tell you what these bags are for. And these bag, when you grab one of these bags and you give it to a homeless person, you give it to someone in need, it's basically a contact point where you, you've been praying, Lord, use me. I want to win souls. I want this is how you do it. And this is a model that Jesus did, right? The woman at the well, he went there and he started talking about the natural, talking about the water. And then he flipped it and started talking about the supernatural. We've learned this from Kevin and Kathy. But you take one of these bags and you give them one of these bags and they'll say, what is this? And you'll say, listen, there's a book written in heaven about you that God wants you to fulfill. And remember, when you're talking to them, you are talking to the image of God. And I've heard this and I borrowed it from Kevin because I don't steal anymore. But the currency in heaven is souls. Amen? The currency in heaven is souls. It's people. I mean, why else are we here? Why else are we gathered together? We're here to get filled up, to get healed, to get whole, and then go out to a broken, dying world that needs Jesus. Amen? Yeah, let's put hands together for Jesus. And I'm going to hurry because I feel the preach coming on me here. Um, but listen, we, we just want to encourage you. We just had an awesome outreach at our church, and we literally started out with just holding signs up in the front of our church. And, you know, we're in a church here, and this would be a perfect place. And I just challenge you, you could take signs and put on there free prayer, free water, free money, free groceries, and just watch what God does. We've been doing this at our church, and we have people coming in that said, if I didn't if I didn't find you guys, my family would not be able to have groceries this week. And that's always been Kevin and Kathy's heart, and he's teaching us. And you've heard him say it. We're going to do this together. So I just want to challenge you. Find a parking lot. You could do it at Walmart. I've been to Walmart before where we gave out, we're giving out school supplies. I went into Walmart in the school supply section and said, hey, before you buy that, we're giving it away free at my church right now. And this has happened twice. You can ask Pastor Ryan uh, to verify my story. The people were coming in and they, and we asked them, how did you hear about it? And they said, there's some guy at Walmart in the school supply section just telling me to come here. Uh, but I just want to challenge you. Like I said, we just had an outreach and we had over 300 people come through our church. Yeah, clap for that. It's amazing. <laughs> Amen. And they came in and they got their hot dog, and they got their $5 inside their bag, and then they got cotton candy, and they got popcorn, and they came into the sanctuary, and they got prayer. And they asked them, hey, I know you're here, and you stopped by. What can we help you with? And they'll say, well, I need groceries. And they'll say, well, can I pray with you, right? It's the contact point that I was talking about, and Kevin and Kathy's taught us this. And then they go into the back of our pantry, and I know you guys are doing a lot of stuff here. And they come in, and the stories will break your heart, where someone said, you know what? I had $40. I was on my way to the grocery store. I saw your sign. I was able to get groceries. Now I can also get gas so I can make it through the week. That's the kind of stories that are going on out here. So I just want to challenge you. This is a special season right now where we have to lift up our eyes and look on the fields because the harvest is ripe. Amen? Pastor Mike. All right. Praise God. Well, I will tell you this, everything Chris tells you is true, and there's more he doesn't tell you. But we've learned this from Kevin, he who wins souls is what? Wise. wise, right? So that means if you could win a soul by doing something for them, and it's wisdom, then why wouldn't you do it? Get creative, right? That's what the gospel's for. So we're so excited to be in Wapan. You know, this is, I know Kevin's been coming here for quite a while, and uh, he's been sowing the word into this place and sowing the word into all of us. So we're so honored to be with you guys this weekend. And listen, it's, this is time to receive. You've been giving out a lot. You've been, you've been going through a lot. Why don't you come and take a big drink this weekend, okay? 
And matter of fact, let me tell you why you could take a big drink. It's because you didn't have to pay anything to come here. <laughs> How many of you got your, you got your uh, study guides, you got your CDs, right? Nobody got charged to come in here. You didn't get charged for parking. You didn't get charged for the bathroom. You didn't get charged for anything, right? And that's because Jesus loves you and he has a wonderful plan for your life. And Kevin and Kathy's vision is that there's a group of partners that come behind this ministry and they take care of everything. And that's exactly what you see happening. Right now we have thousands of partners that are behind the vision that Kevin and Kathy have shared with us all these years. And so for every partner that's here and maybe online watching, I just want to say a real special thank you from Kevin and Kathy. And, you know, let me tell you, it's because of you guys. Everywhere, every time the Lord speaks to Kevin, he doesn't flinch. And he never has to because he knows that God has sent a group of people behind this ministry to pray. And honestly, the prayer is what's fueling so much more than the money. Trust me. It's the prayer. But thank you to every partner that's here. We're so honored that you're here. We're so thankful. And let me tell you, when you see what God is in, has in store for the rest of this year, and let me tell you what is al already being set up for 2024 is going to be unbelievable. It's going to be unbelievable. And it's because the partners have come behind Kevin and Kathy, and we are going to make sure that the gospel gets everywhere we possibly can. So thank you, partners, so much. Now, I do know that there's some Warrior Note School ministry students here. Oh, that was your cue, by the way. <laughs> so I just got some numbers in. You know, we've got a graduation in, what, like three weeks. And uh, we just counted. We have 324 students graduating in September. Isn't that amazing? Now, we got a few more crossing the finish line. So if you're here, you're watching online, and you're right there at your 60 credits or 120 credits, you better say something because, let me tell you, Jesus, sometimes he'll pass you by if you don't speak up, and we might too. So please do <laughs> Please say something if you're really close. We need to know. But we are so excited because it's just a few weeks away. Is there anybody here that will be graduating in Dalton? Whoa. All right, guys. Fantastic. I saw you in the overflow, too. And there's somebody screaming online. I can hear you. We, we got you. We got you. We're so excited because God is moving in your life. You have said yes, and God is equipping you because you have a ministry and you have a calling, and we're so thankful that you guys are being a part of this. Right now, we are almost at 36,000 students, and let me tell you, God is moving in an incredible way, and uh, we're so thankful that you guys are saying yes. Even in the midst of everything you've been through, you're casting aside every weight, and you're saying yes. So to all you students out there, keep going. We are, we are getting ready for Dalton, and let me tell you, the stuff we have planned is off the charts. When I say off the charts, it's Warrior Notes style off the charts, which is a whole nother category. If you go to Webster, you're going to find it. It'll say off the charts, subtitle, Warrior Notes, exceedingly abundantly above whatever you could ask or imagine. <laughs> so praise God. Thank you, students, for being a part. We're so excited. God is moving, and God's going to move in your life this weekend. And a few other things I want to share with you guys. We have been seeing such miraculous things this year, and, um, and just to piggyback on the partners just a little bit more, I don't know if, if you guys realize all that the ministry's been able to do, but this year alone, we've seen hundreds of salvations with the kids. You know, every spirit school, we see, we have the kids spirit school with that, with the simulators and the pilots, and this year, we've been teaching them how to be chefs, where Captain Kevin has set it up where the kids are, are working on a grill and they have to organize the food and they have to do all these things. They have to learn to multitask because how many parents would like to have a little help teaching their kids chores and manners and safety? And that's also why he has uh, safety with, um, we've got a, a, one of our retired police officers with us and he does firearm training with the kids. We take out dinosaurs because we want to teach them that dinosaurs are bad. There's a reason why the flood took them out, right? And so Captain Kevin has been pouring into the kids, and you're going to see more and more happening for all the kids. Um, we've also launched Warrior Teens. I don't know if some of you have been able to see some of the episodes with Captain Kevin talking with the teens. 
and we are starting a whole outreach to the youth. We're starting outreach to the kids. We're starting outreach to seniors. If you're out there, we're going to reach you. That's the goal. But you partners are funding this. And I don't know if you know this too, but right now we've been able to do amazing things. Right now we have a Puerto Rico outreach coming up where we're going to go so into Puerto Rico and help the beautiful people that are there. We also have partnered with um, Water Springs Ranch in Texarkana. You know, um, we have a house out there. Captain Kevin has a house. It's called the Zadai House. And they literally built that to help because they had so many kids. And let me tell you that these wonderful children, these precious gifts of God, that they have been, uh, they've been rejected twice because they were adopted and they were sent back. And the system has, has pretty much not had a lot of hope for them. But there's a team of people that are walking in the love of God there that are literally helping these kids get on their track with their destiny. And it's the most precious thing ever. Amen. And that's what Kevin and Kathy and Warrior Notes wants to get behind. So they've built a house. They've gotten vans. They're going to make sure that they have a wonderful Christmas this year. And they're going to continue to do that. And it's because it's time for us to reach people. And so thank you guys for everything you do because we want you to know that you're, you're not just attending here. You guys are family. And together, if we reach the children and we reach the teens and we reach all these different groups of people with the gospel, then we can change our generation. It doesn't have to go the way it's been going. And so it takes unity. So we need more warriors. And so if there's anybody out there that has known about Warrior Notes, first of all, say, where in the world have you been? There's a school, there's a college, there's everything. But get them and help us. Okay, one last thing, and that is homeschool. How many homeschool parents do we have here? You can raise your hand. That's not a bad, it's a good thing. I see it overflow. Fantastic. Let me tell you. It's time for us to teach our kids about the gospel and help them be raised up in excellence, okay? Now, if we wait for the world to train our kids, they're not going to turn out very well. I don't know if you know that. Now, we have wonderful teachers and wonderful educators and principals and people that are out there, but there's also others that don't have the best intentions, okay? So I want to encourage you with this. Kevin and Kathy had a, had a vision from the Lord and had a mandate from the Lord to provide homeschool curriculum for all the kids that are out there. Now, we have kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and I've got second grade right here. I'm not going to tell you everything in it, and it's really heavy. So remember how heavy your books were back in school, right? But this is the best of the best. This is not cookie cutter. This was made literally from a blank page where Kevin has handpicked certain people that were called of God and had years and years of excellent education experience. And they've created this with two things, that they exceed all state standards, that they go about far above and beyond what any school would require, and that it's literally infused with the identity and the love of God. And so I want to encourage you, if you're newer to homeschool, you don't have to be afraid of it. We've homeschooled, and at first it was scary for us. But you'd be surprised the network of people that are available. And also, if you're not on Warrior Chat, I encourage you Warrior Chat because we have our homeschool team on there. And you can ask questions and learn more. But starting homeschool is so simple. It's so simple, you're going to think you're doing something wrong. But then you're going to find out you did something very right. <laughs> yes, sir. That's where I was heading. That was my final point, but it's okay. So I'm excited to also tell you this, that third grade is a finally and officially done. We literally received the pallet as Captain Kevin was flying here. And so in the next week or two online, you're going to see third grade. So we'll have kinder, first, second, third grade, and we're already working on fourth grade. And we're going as fast as we can to get through K-12 because the goal is this, is that your kids begin uh, finish high school early. And then they also earn their uh, degree from Warrior Notes School of Ministry. And then they start a business. They go into ministry. They do what God's called them to do because they are so far ahead. Okay? So that's the goal. How many are going to help us do that? All right. Dr. Kevin Zedai. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Gee. Alrighty then. All right. In conclusion... <laughs> I hope you heard everything. Dear Lord. Anyway, thank you. I'm, I remember I was thinking about this. 
that I stood, stood on this very spot and started the ministry seven years ago. And I just want to thank Pastor Wayne and Pastor Lisa and all the congregation here at the river. The water is deep here. Amen. Um, the uh, the uh, topic this weekend um, is going to change like four times. So just dump everything that I'm about to tell you. No. You could dump this data every day, but the Lord is moving by the Spirit. So when that happens, um, we all have a choice to go with the Spirit or to do it our way. And we already have um, videos out on what happens when you do it your way. So, and even Burger King is going out of out of business with "Have it your way," you know. So it's not "Have it your way." Jesus never preached that. It's not about you, and it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a personal agenda. And so the Spirit of God has spoken to me about what is needed for the, the, message, the, the message to the church. It's going to be launched this, this weekend. And, you know, it's a prophetic utterance for the whole world. It's for the, it's for the church. I, I was not the first choice. I actually defaulted to it because I guess all the other ministers are busy this weekend. I don't know. No, I'm just saying that we're going to obey God, right? We're going to obey God. We're going to let it fly. We're going to let it fly out of our mouth. All of us have the word of faith in our, in our lips. We need to let it go. We need to let it fly. And um, hopefully it doesn't come back um, and hit you in the head like a boomerang. Hopefully somebody grabs it on, the, on this trip. That's my whole hope is that I don't feel seed come back and hit me. I don't want it ricocheting off y'all. Amen. Okay, so, so we, we have this study guide, and it's uh, how to minister healing. Um, that is yours, the uh, CD. You need to listen to that. Um, I've never worn out. I have worn it. Kathy and I have worn out CDs. We've actually done it. We can, you, there is a way to wear out a CD, and that is play it for like six years in a row, 24-7, and we've gone through that. So, But you need to wear that CD out about all the healing scriptures. Because you don't want to quote the healing scriptures on the way to the hospital in the ambulance. You want to quote your scriptures every day. You want, to, you want to get it part of you. You want it to be implemented inside of you. And you might skip the ambulance. You know, who knows? And you might be so convinced that God's your healer that you walk in divine healing instead of, in other words, divine health. Um, you can skip the tractor running over your foot. You know what I mean? Let's talk about skipping the accident completely. Let's, let's not um, wake up one morning and find out something that has been living in your body has developed when you could put an end to it right now, right tonight. Why wait for stage one, two, and three? Just, just go ahead and, and let's just zap it right now. So anyway, this is for you. This is for ministering to the sick. But the CD, you need to get all the scriptures, everything that the Lord has given in that subject the counsel of the Lord is in his word. But the Holy Spirit has to be able to come into any situation and speak forth from the other realm. So the word of God is a person, but the person of Jesus Christ comes forth by the spirit of God through the church. It's always been God's will. God uses his body. The body is the believers on the earth. The body is the ecclesia. It's just not just the church building because, I, I mean, God moved today and I was going 400 and some miles an hour, up, uh, you know, upside down yesterday. 400 and some miles an hour upside down. And God was moving. So were other things in my cockpit. <laughs> but the bottom line is this. You can't just have the word. The word and the spirit agree. I mean, last time I checked, I mean, the nearly inspired version still has that in there. So you've got that. You've got... The, the combination of the Word of God and the Spirit of God. So this weekend, the Lord has changed my direction. We're going to be talking about the communion table. We're going to be talking about, in particular, all the hard sayings that no ministers would ever even go there. They would not even do it. You know what? And I was taught. I was taught this by the best. All your favorites have, have coached me. You don't talk about this. You don't do this. You know, you do this. And I'm like, well, what are you hiding from? What are you hiding from? What, because the, Jesus didn't hide the will of the Father. 
you know, he, he was confident that, hey, like, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He was confident that he was representing the Father. So when he went around and healed everyone, doing good and healing everyone, he wasn't representing himself. He said that, right? He said he was representing the Father. But he never, ever made anybody sick, ever. Okay, so this is the thing. We went through a challenge in the last three years. We had a lot of stealing, killing, and destroying going on. And people blame God for it. Somebody just needs to stand up. I'm not waiting for the camels to come. The camels aren't coming. Chariots of fire are coming. Camels take their time, and you see where that's got us. Ministry is at the speed of light. Come on now. Ministry is coming forth from a a realm that has no limitations. Because thank God you weren't involved in the planning process because it would have limitations. But God, God didn't invite you because you would have messed up the equation. Okay, so the Spirit wants to speak certain things from this place all over the world, to, to circle the globe, because it is round. I checked. I've been up there. It's, it's not a pizza. All my pilot friends have flown, never landed, went around the world, never landed because they just refueled in the air. It is round. So all around the world, the word of God flows. And when the, when the word of God comes forth, the bottom line is this. You cannot blame God for anything that is happening in the government, in, the, in any kind of agency. I mean, you don't want to opt out of the full truth. But when you start to get opinionated and you start to form what I call the, t- the 10th gift of the Spirit, which is criticism. Be- and it's like the, I mean, I thought that the Spirit was supposed to, dis- he was supposed to distribute the gifts as he wills, right? Severally as he wills. Okay, I thought he was doing that, but it seems like everybody got one, the gift of criticism, which is not even really a gift. But everybody like is so proud that they call it discernment, you know. but it's criticism. And um, so the message that the Lord gave me this, this weekend is, is it's defaulted. It's defaulted because it doesn't make any money. It won't get you on a TV show. It's not going to sell any books. So I'm going to have to preach it because I don't need, I don't need your money. I don't need anything. I, I don't even need you to like me. I just need to know that you heard what I said, and when the ark door closes and you can't get in, well, guess what? You know what? I told you, it's time to get your oil. It's time to get your wick ready. It's time. It's time. It's time. We're all going to fall asleep. We're all going to wake up, and half of us are going to be ready and half are not. That's not my choice. I would have raised my hand in that meeting and said, you know what? Can we just like, you know, make it a little easier? Maybe put out a pamphlet Maybe even publish when Jesus is coming back, you know. I'm warning you right now. I'm warning you by the Spirit of God. This is not Kevin talking to you. I'm warning you. Is that you need to get ready and be the five wise virgins. And you need to do it now. You need to start sowing into someone else's future. You need to start helping other people. You need to stop criticizing and stop being critical. And, you, you know, and I'm not saying you guys are doing this. I'm saying it for all the other people. <laughs> I'm saying it because you all have an opportunity to reap the benefits of, of working with the Spirit of God and, and receiving your reward because He does reward those who diligently seek Him. 
when you seek him, you're, you're gaining understanding, which is also attributed to uh, the anointing oil and the oil and the, the fact that you can burn and have a wick and you can, you can be lit up. You know, I'm looking for lights at night. You know, I'm looking for something lit up in the dark. I'm looking for people that are glowing in the dark. I'm looking for someone who is going to at least do what Enoch did, since he didn't even have anything close to what we have. Anyway, I feel better now. So that's <laughs> so. This weekend is about is this weekend is about the table of the Lord, which nobody will say anything about because it, it mentions that uh, some of you, because you've been disobedient, you're not doing it right. Uh, you're not living. You're not living your life right. You're not. Um, you know, not focusing on, your, on, on the fact that God wants you to judge yourself. Oh, let's see how it always goes over. Let's take another offering. <laughs> let's see if I break seven cents in the offering now. I'm just getting you to laugh because I know that you all are with me. So, here, here we go. This is what the Lord visited me this weekend with. He said, your entrance into high-level advancement. Your entrance into high-level advancement. I mean, I'm talking about acceleration. And this first one I'm going to talk about is the art of working on yourself. Now, Jesus said something really hard that nobody ever gets. He said, can, can, consider not by saying. So it's talking about thinking about something and then saying it. Well, don't consider something by saying that will opt you out of your race at this stage. You don't want, you don't want to be out of the race now. After all this that you've done, you don't want to finish in the flesh what you started in the spirit. Just to quote the Bible, you know, to bring that into it, <laughs> you know. So this is what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the earth, to the world, to, the, to, to just not just believers, but the unbelieving believers, and then the, 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 the reprobate. He's saying it to every single creature, everybody. What he's saying is this, I have done the most amazing thing for, for mankind, and I would like some acknowledgement, I would like some respect. So this is what he did. He promised the patriarchs to always be their God. So when Joseph, you know, we went through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then we had Joseph. So when Joseph was in Egypt, he was sent ahead. He was sent there by his jealous brothers. And Satan had gotten into the mindset of the whole family in order to abort the plan of God. So the family was working. Even, even um, the, the father, father said, you, so we're going to bow down to you. You had a dream and we're going to bow down to you. And the brother said, we can take care of this real quick. Okay, so Joseph said, well, what you meant for bad, God meant for good. Okay, so God didn't stop them from doing that. But you know what? I want to tell you, if I was in that meeting, I said, God, you know what? I'll Uber them down there. I'll Uber Joseph down there. You don't have to, like, do this. But he ended up in a pit. Do you, you realize you, you end up in a pit over a hanging chad or a, a, a false account? False, fake. You end up in the pit. You get stolen from. The nation gets stolen from. Okay, you, you're in the pit. But see, you, you don't see that, yes, you would rather just go there on your own accord and work it out. But see, if there isn't the process of repentance and righteousness within the system, you have to go into the judgment part of it where it, you divide and you separate. Nobody wants to say anything about this. The killing, Jesus said, you're going to know if I'm in this or not 
because the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come to bring you life and, and give you life more abundantly. So it, he adds the abundant life. You know what it says in the Greek? Same thing as in the English. Abundant. Okay, so it's overflowing provision. But the overflowing provision that Jesus provides was from the other realm. And it was from his father. So if you want to participate in the kingdom of God, then everything you do must be by faith. But it has to be through love. You have to be motivated by love and you express it that way. But you have to have faith because that realm is so real, but it is locked out of our physical vision. So you have to operate in a spirit realm, which is by faith. So faith is very vital. But in order to connect with you to get you healed, I have to have love. I have to have compassion or it's, it means nothing. Why is it taking us 2,000 years to come back to this message? I don't know. But I got tired of being on the sidelines and watching everybody, all my friends for 40 years after I went to, to college. Everybody went into the ministry and I went and worked for a living. I don't want to be a minister, not with the system the way it is. I'll wait until they really need me badly. And then I'll come as Kevin. I'll come as Kevin with no title, and I'll do everything out of the box. In fact, at Warrior Notes, we actually burnt the box. There, we are out of the box, and it's, it, there's no way back. I've, I've, there's nothing. There's no, we're not going back. We just destroyed the box. We're out of the box because Jesus moved out of the box. Why? He laid aside his deity. Now, this is the hornet's nest. If you, you know, and all my friends are going to throw bottles at me. I'll tell you why. Is Jesus, Jesus, it says it in Hebrews. It says he considered being equal with God as nothing. And not, not able to be grasped. So he laid it aside. He had laid aside his deity and became a servant. What, Pastor Jim, what is so hard about that? You, you wouldn't believe. I mean, I get, 50, I, get, I get mortars. I don't even get like little 22 rounds. I get mortars by the big boys. Like, because you say something that, that is very basic. Jesus operated as a man by the Holy Spirit, sent by God. He was the Son of God. He was equal with God, but he laid it aside. The only couple of times that he actually operated as God is he accidentally, on purpose, said, I am, <laughs> a couple times. And when he did that, the other realm and all the authority that is, uh, that is behind him as God, when he said that word, when he said the name, and I, I guarantee you, I know what he said. What he said was what the high priest said once a year with blood in the Holy of Holies. When he said that name, they, no one says that name outside the Holy of Holies. But when he said it, that, that the breath that he said that with was the same breath that he formed the universes. And they all fell back. They couldn't handle that. But it's like he's thinking, well, you asked. You asked, okay. But see, it's like Paul. He got pushed. But he always operated as as the son of man. The demons, when they, they knew who he was, what would he say? He would say, shut up. He said, I, he, I, he said the son of man all the time. He was son of man, son of man, son of man. Why? Because he had to do it under the Holy Spirit. Sent, sent one. He was a sent one under the Holy Spirit. He was given authority by the father to do the works of the father. Okay, so that's the way it's supposed to be. He considered himself a servant. So he laid it aside. So that was what the temptation in the desert was all about. The temptation in the desert was Satan was saying to him, if you are the son of God, do this. He couldn't do that. He wasn't allowed to cross over. Come on now, please. Because you, think about this. Jesus told me. He said, when he said, if you are the son of God, he said, I looked at him and I remember the day I created him. He knows who I am. He was trying to get him to do something other than under what he was told to do, 
which was to be a human being, God in flesh, but lay aside his deity. Now, God wouldn't ever say, why have you forsaken me? Jesus wouldn't say that as God or the Son of God, because that would never happen. But he didn't lie when he said it. And that's the second biggest hornet's nest. When you, when you start to talk about that he was abandoned in the belly of the earth, oh boy, here we go, number two. Incoming, you know, and... <laughs> and that's why in a fighter jet, you, you, break, you break really hard, right or left, and you start chaffing and flaring. You start putting out metal flakes and hot sensitive flares to fake, to fake the missile. Because as soon as you start speaking the truth, as it has to do with you working with the Holy Spirit on this earth in the same way that Jesus did, Satan's going to let go on you. And you better break right and chaff and flare as you're pulling hygiene. You know, in other words, you're going to have to, you're, you're going to find out what it's like to be a real Christian. The fight is on. As soon as you start to talk about the fact that Jesus laid aside his deity and considered it being equal with God as nothing, I, have I said anything wrong? I'm just quoting scripture after scripture. Okay, so I come to you tonight. I come all over the world to you with this message. And that is, after I put my employee number in. Okay. Now, now this is the thing. Is we focus on the gifts of the Spirit. We focus on the anointing oil. We focus on um, prophets, apostles, we, we, you know, uh, pastors, teachers, evangelists, and their anointing. And we forget that we can go to the table ourselves and receive healing. And that the healer is really inside of us, you know. We forget that we've depended on uh, somebody else doing it for us to the point where the fivefold's worn out and they end up quitting because you put pressure on them to perform or to do something that literally, I don't know where it got, it got out that, we're, that the fivefold's supposed to be doing all this stuff for you. I don't work for you. I work for God. You work for God. You have the same salvation I do. You have the same gifts of spirit. But if the spirit isn't operating in the gifts of healing at the time, because it's as he wills, and it doesn't have anything to do with what you think. Because really, you could have elders lay hands on you or, pour, or anoint you with oil. I mean, if you want to bring James into it, oh, I'm glad you asked because that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring James into it this weekend. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for giving me permission. Okay, so I'm going to read this to you as it is in Corinthians, and I'm going to tell you that the reason you're not receiving your healing is not just because you have a lack of faith, which is what you've been told. And that's why God just shut the whole thing down. I'm just telling you, you're going to find this out. No one else wants to say this, but it, God has shut it down. I'll tell you why. It's because Joseph made, made his, his uh, sons promise that when, when we leave, because we're going to leave in 400 years, and, and I, we go into the promised land, make sure you take my bones with you, okay? Honor me. I don't want to be in Egypt. I don't want to be in the world. I want to go to the promised land. Make sure you carry my bones out, okay? So 400 years later, 430 if you want to count, if you took advanced math, you know, I'm going to get ding for it. You know, it's 430 years, you know, it's like, okay. It says 400 years up in the prophecies. So, but the bottom line is this. You have God promising this whole thing to the people. And in 400 years later, Moses comes back into the scene, goes there. They go through the whole thing in Goshen, the whole thing with the 10 plagues. And it's a whole process of hardening Pharaoh's heart. And he just gets worse and worse, just like some, of, uh, some people do when you preach the Word of God. They just get worse and worse. They get hard. They don't, you know, I wish they'd melt, but they're not butter. It's margarine. It doesn't melt. You know, it's like, but this clay, you know, some people just harden, right? Hard, they harden. 
Okay, so we have that process, but this is what I wanted to get to, is that Moses was told by God to bring the people up to the mountain because he had done this a wonderful thing and the miracles that had happened and were happening. So he was expecting all of them to come up because God wanted to be recognized for what he had done, that he had kept his promise. That is what's happening right now on the earth. Right now, God is waiting for us to voluntarily come to him and thank him for keeping his promises. Because we're a remnant and we're here. But we have to stay in agreement. We have to, we have to operate together. We have to be in unity. We have to get, get out of the competition and, and just turn ourselves in and let's find out how we can work together. But I'm not talking about giving up doctrine because I'm not giving up nothing. I'm going to pray in tongues. I'm going to, I'm going to pray for the sick. Everything that is in the Bible, I'm going to continue to do until my very last breath. I'm never backing off of anything. But I am not going to let the thief steal, kill, or destroy on my watch if I can help it. But what I need to do is I need to tell you that there are things that are going on in your life that need to be taken care of. And you're going to get healed without giving an offering, without getting blown on, without getting pushed over, without even a demon leaving because if you do the right things, the demons don't like you. If you start to, to release them from their assignment by not allowing them to hook you in the flesh, Jesus said, listen, the evil one's coming, but he has nothing in me. And in, 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 the, in the word studies, it says nothing to hook in my flesh, nothing to hook me. It says that. So demons have a reason to be around. You gotta, you gotta get rid of that. You don't leave your, your you know, you don't, if you don't want varmints around, you just don't leave any scraps out. What I do is with the squirrels, I ordered from Amazon the highest powered pellet gun with a, a sight, and it came, it came with the, the original box, so it had the, the pellet gun on there with the sight. I just left it out there at the front door. And all, I'm serious, all those squirrels, I mean, they just disappeared. I mean, they're smarter than you think. I know somebody that's, that's in our area that literally takes the carcasses and lays them out in the yard. To, to, so they're all their friends. I wouldn't go that far with it. But you know what? It's just... Why is it that people have to be forced into doing the right thing? Why is it because of fear of going to hell that we get saved? Because Paul said it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance, not the fear of hell. Paul never said anything like that, ever. He, he would not get along today with a lot of preachers. And yet you want to, you would say, you know, you want him in to come to speak at your church if he is alive. No, you wouldn't. Uh, you, you wouldn't want any of the apostles to come. Because Paul said, listen, my, I, I just want you to know I'm coming. But it's up to you how I come. Am I coming with a whip? Or are we going to get along and make up and kiss? He said, you decide. But right now, he said, I'm upset. So this is the side that's never preached. So Paul said this. He said, I have the following instructions. I cannot praise you. And this is in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, right? Right, Kath? And uh, I'm starting with verse 17. But in the following instructions, I cannot praise you. So you're going to get healed this weekend, but it's going to be by something that you have just totally missed. Maybe not. Maybe you, have, you know all this. Maybe I can just go home right now. For it sounds as if more harm than good is done when you meet together. Oh, boy. Okay. First, I hear that there are divisions among you. When you meet as a church, and to some extent, I believe it. But, of course, there must be divisions among you so that you who have God's approval can be recognized. So he's like, he's really upset. 
He's being sarcastic. Okay, when you meet together, you are not really interested in the Lord's Supper. The, oh, by the way, this is New Testament for all you Old Testament people, you know. Okay, for some of you, hurry to eat your meal, your own meal, your own meal, which is not your own meal, without sharing with others. As a result, some go hungry while you, you others get drunk. What? Don't you have your own homes for eating and drinking? Or do you really want to disgrace God's church and shame the poor? Oh, he's bringing the poor into it. Oh, boy. See, I'm sticking up for the poor. I'm sticking up for the single parents. I'm sticking sticking up for all of you because what I'm finding is, is that favor has become corrupt. The the word for favor has become corrupt, and it's being misrepresented because Paul had favor, and he wrote this letter from jail. And he was approved by God. He said, I, I, I have the badge. I have the, the identification of being an apostle. And he took his shirt off. He said, I have the stripes of Jesus on my back. Okay, I have never heard any minister say that, that I know of. And, and, and because you know why? Because we have it so good until the Antichrist starts to peek his head up at the end of the age and starts inventing the disease of the week or whatever. Or whatever. You know, all this stuff that's going on. Just, and you're like, just, I'm just going to keep ignoring it. Clicking my heels three times. There's no place like home. And, and Annie Am and Toto are going to come back. And we're going to be fine. You know, the, w- the wicked witch of the West. And the good witch and the bad witch. And the sandwiches are all. It's all going to work itself out. Just ignore it, right? Well, that is why we've done nothing in 2,000 years since this was written. is because we don't take it to heart and apply it to our own life. And you can be healed this weekend. You can be healed right now as I'm talking. Now, I know online they're getting it. They're getting healed right now in other countries. Because you know why? They aren't complicated. And they haven't had, they, they, you know, there's countries, they, they don't have the 10th gift of the Spirit. You know, I'm just joking about the 10th gift. There's only nine. But, you know, just like there was 10 commandments, and by the time the Jews were done with it, it's 613. Okay, so what am I supposed to say? I agree, Paul. Do you want me to praise you? Well, I certainly would not praise you for this. Okay, verse 23. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself, which means, okay, which means that he received it by a vision or revelation when he's caught up with him because, you know, to, we, to our knowledge, he never met Jesus except on the road to Damascus. And some of you have really met the, the Jesus that you serve on the road to Damascus. But you know what? There's other stuff coming. And I already know what it is. I'm going to share it tomorrow morning in Coffee Talk. Because, you know, it just seems like if you've got the mermaid in your hand, you, you know, you're drinking from the mermaid cup, you're, you know, Starbucks that you feel better, you know, it's like a feel-good thing, you know, but what about if you're, like most of us that are doing things right, you're suffering for doing right. For being right and, 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 and doing right, you suffer loss. Okay, so that's not in any of the faith teaching. I got that degree on my wall, but Paul had a faith teaching, it's like, um, you know, I consider everything a loss to gain Christ. He said, I, it's not even my own life anymore. My, my body's not mine. My life is not mine. It, it literally says in, in a translation, it says, it's as though Jesus has hijacked my body, has, has borrowed my body, and is doing his ministry through it. 
That's the mindset of the apostles. And that's why they got thrown in jail. It's because they were speaking from the other realm. Now, if I get thrown in jail for speaking the truth, they're not going to put what I say to you when I write you. They're going to put it in the Bible. I'm not at Paul's level. Neither are you. Neither is any apostle today. They're not, you're not writing scripture. Either are the prophets. The prophets are only saying what God is saying. But how much of that actually gets done? I mean, how much does God actually have his way with? He speaks the truth. He reveals it. And then you watch fake news. And you listen to word salads all day. And you're trying to interpret these new words that are being said. And, and so this is, this is our inheritance? No. No, 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 no. This is our inheritance. The table of the Lord is one of these things that we have inherited. Okay, so this, this, is, this is what he said. I received this from the Lord my, himself. Okay, so it had to be by a vision and revelation by the Spirit. Okay, on that night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and he gave thanks for it. Then he broke it into pieces and he said, this is my body which I have given for you. How can you mess this up? Do this in remembrance of me. So when you do this, you're supposed to be thinking of him. But you also have to think about where it all started. They were at a table, and it was a table of betrayal. So Judas was at that table, and they were taking bread. They were breaking bread. And John wanted to know, which is the one that's going to betray you? And he says, well, Jesus said, it's one of our employees. It's one of our ordained ministers. I'm going to, I'm going to take the bread, and I'm going to dip it, and then I'm going to hand it to the person who's going to do this. So he handed it to Judas, and they all watched. When he took it and ate it, he ate it unworthily. Because he didn't discern the body of the Lord. So when he ate it unworthily, he brought, he brought judgment upon the whole table. All the disciples. By doing what he did, he did it to everyone at the table. See, this is why you never hear this part of it. You just take the cup and the bread and you get it done and you go on to the next thing. But this is a sacred, holy action that accesses the supernatural. Amen. And I'll tell you why. I mean, you won't hear this on it's supernatural. <laughs> Maybe you would. I don't know. What? Okay. For I pass this on to you. He says, this is my body. If you remember to me, in the same way he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. It's a covenant. It's representative of the blood of Jesus. Whether, what, what, you know, I don't care what it is. You know, you, you, know, you want to argue? I mean, there's nobody in hell that ever, that ever smoked. If you smoke, you don't go to hell for smoking. You go to hell because you don't either, you either don't accept Jesus or you do and you don't walk in it. Then I would not want to be the, in that room that when your decision is made. I would rather just be right on the right side. So like Peter said, Peter, all the disciples, all the apostles said, listen, make sure you're in Christ. Make sure you're walking worthily of the calling you've received. That's the kind of thing that you should be focused on, not if you're going to just barely make it in or not. Okay, so I'm not going to argue with you about individual sins because individual sins are just a, a fruit that grows on your tree that people are going to legitimately judge <laughs> because it's by your, their, your fruit that they're going to know you. Okay, so if you're in bondage to anything, it's idolatry. If you're bowing to any altar, it might be cheese curds. <laughs> I, I'm serious. If you crave, if, you, if it controls you, no. No. 
In other words, can you say no for God? That's all God wants to know is, is, is if, if he tells you no, then that's it. Okay, that's all I'm saying. So I'm not going to argue with about if it was wine or grape juice. Of course you know it was wine. But I don't drink. And I just want to tell you, when I went to heaven and I came back, there's a whole bunch of things that you guys are doing that I would never do. But I'm really sure of it now. But before I went there, I was just like you. I was gray. I'm not talking about aliens either. I was gray in a lot of areas, and I should have been sharp. And, and I'll tell you what, when I got it right, when I got it right, then I'm not bowing to nothing except the altar of God. I'm going to bow to Jesus Christ. I'm going to crucify my flesh. I'm going to live worthy of my calling. <laughs> Amen? Okay, so, so he broke those into pieces, and he said that was his body. He drank the wine, and he said, this is the covenant an agreement confirmed with blood, okay? So when Judas ate that, did you notice what happened exactly when he took it in? It says there, Satan entered into him. So this is why you have demon problems. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm being so bold. But the bottom line is, is the word of God has been here all this time and no one wants to preach it anymore. But I, I know you do, and I'm going to train the students to do this. But the, the bottom line is this. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the body. And, and part of, of the body is so we partake of the, the flesh and the blood in a, in a sacrament, which is symbolic. But wait till I read. It's not, it's not just like some make-believe Disney Channel movie. This, this, look, look, look what happens if you don't do this right. I'm just hoping that every pastor, every fivefold minister, every student, every Christian preaches this. Because there'll be a massive amount of healings coming on. You don't need your favorite minister to come. I'm not saying because there's all kinds of modes that people get healed. But I've been healed on my own faith. I've also been healed when I didn't have faith. I've received healing when I didn't deserve it. I don't have a degree on my wall on that. How many people talk about that? That healing is also by grace. Okay, but this, just like when, when an elder puts oil on my forehead, I'm healed. I know I am. Why? Because James said so. Stop, stop, stop arguing. Sin is sin. Just stop arguing about all this stuff. I mean, I'm listening to my favorite ministers swear now. They don't even like edit it out Monday morning anymore. They used to do, they used to edit it out. No, they don't. It's like, okay, you know what? You got to be kidding me. You gotta get to a place where you say, you know what? When I grow up, I don't want to be like you. you. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta become your own. Whatever God has called you to do, you gotta come out of it and say, you know what? God is gonna define who I am. I mean, didn't He write a book about you? Okay. All right. I'm just warming up. We got plenty of time here. That's East Coast time. We're all right. All right. All right. So He said, "Do this in remembrance of Me." When when Judas ate of it, Satan entered into him. And you wonder why you have a, a, a demon problem. Judas was on staff. Judas went to the three and a half year course. G Judas watched demons fly out of people. I mean, according to all scripture, Judas cast devils out of people. I mean, you know, the 70 did, so you know the 12 did, right? Okay, so what happened here? He did not discern the Lord's body. He made decisions for all of us, just like Adam and Eve did. They made decisions. They didn't pay it forward. They didn't get, every time you do, every time you bow to an, an altar that is unholy, you, you're, you're making decisions for all of us. I've never heard anybody say that. 
So I'm just going to say it, and I'm just going to remain Kevin, Captain Kevin. I don't even have to be a minister, but I'm telling you by the, by the power of God and, the, and the, the word, of the, word of, the, of the Spirit of God tonight, all over the earth, that God has given us a way to participate and find unity and commonality among each other, and it's at the table of the Lord. But we got to discern the body. So, if you want demons to leave, just take communion. You don't have to go and watch a movie on deliverance. You don't have to have an apostle pray over you. See, this always goes over well because we'd rather depend on someone else, someone else's anointing. But I have an anointing from the Holy One. I actually don't need anybody to teach me because I, I mean, I'm just quoting John. I mean, first John is like a, you know, a lost book almost. I mean, when's the last time you hear? I mean, First John's one of my favorite books. James is my favorite author. Never hear him. So I'm going to preach on him verse by verse this weekend. James. Listen, man, we, we got to lip it up. The five wise virgins, you don't want to mess with them. I'm just telling you, the five wise virgins that make it through this, they don't take no for an answer. The five wise virgins can control the weather. Bigfoot is afraid of the five wise virgins. <laughs> UFOs, they won't come over your house. Your, your, your crops, your livestock it will produce way beyond. You will live out your life in its fullness. According to the last verse of Psalms 91, and you will understand the richness of the salvation of the Lord. So it says, when you do this, you're announcing the Lord's death until he comes. We need to tap into that. If you think you understand it, you don't. Because I don't even understand it. I don't even tapped. It. I have not tapped into this. I just know that we need to. We're going to do it together. We're going to, get rid of, we're going to get rid of the reason why the devil is bothering you. We're going to get rid of the reason. Because you know what? I want the devil to wake up and, and see the whole congregation of the river, not just one of you. I want him to know that he's dealing with a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Let the redeeming of the Lord say so. Like, why, why, why doesn't the whole earth, all the Christians stand up right now and start testifying about the, the goodness of God? Say, I, I'm, I will live out my life in the land of the living. I will live out my full life. I'm, I'm, and and this, is, this is how you do it. But it's not, the, it's not just what you think. You're going to find out because Paul is, is not in the Christian cartel. He, he's not controlled by the, by, by the Christian mafia. So this is where there's like no material left. This is like uncharted territory for, for most churches. But it says here, it it's, goes into something that's too hard. Jesus said some hard things. I love the hard sayings of Jesus because it, it whacks off a lot of my fat. Walks off. My head gets smaller. I found I can go through the narrow way. Listen, there's an inheritance on this property. There's, there's, there's blood on this property. There, there's sweat on this property. People have prayed and labored. That's the only reason I'm here is because of someone else who plowed. I'm being obedient. Trust me. I have better things to do right now which involve rest <laughs> and shalom. I, I, you know, I know. I was in heaven. There, there's no angels with grapes. I didn't see grapes. I'm sure they're there. But there's no angel with grapes. But you know what? After this last week, I wish there was angels with grapes and, and fluffy clouds. Because all of us ministers are tired. 
Why? Because there's so few that are really what plowing. They're, they're all saying stuff that it's like it's, it, after four years, I still don't know what they said. But they're, they're bigger than me. But I have no idea what they just said. And I'm like, what does that have to do with the five wise virgins? Because that's where we're at right now. I mean, I get, I get updates from the Lord every day, emails. And it's five wise virgins. Um, I got emails where the, the door of the ark is closed, actually. In fact, I, I, no goats. No goats are converted now. There's no goats getting on the ark. Um, I heard a closing of a door. And what I know that means is the Pharisees have been shut out. I know that's what it means. It's the religious people who have pushed for their position. Jesus called the Pharisees sons of Satan. You're just like your father, the devil. In fact, when I listen to you talk, you speak his language. It's just like I'm listening to your father. That's what he said to them, the head denomination of the day. Listen, this always happens. So you're listening to me. You know how many hundreds of ministers, thousands of ministers have come forth in every generation speaking this the same thing. It's just like this small voice in the wilderness. You want an anointing? You got one from the Holy One. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? This is, this is like the missing transcript that was found in the, the jars in a cave, you know. This is like the 27 on, you know, it's, it's, it's clay tablets, cuneiform. I'm serious. It, it says here, so anyone who eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. I don't think I want that on my resume. How many of you, you would want to be, I mean, okay, so if you, if you do something casually or you don't discern or you're in sin and you're doing this, yeah, I did say that. Because, no, you know, you, we got to just need a couple brave people to say it. Because Paul said it, and he wrote it, but we got to repeat it. we got to continue to keep the bar up high and, and the fire hot from the altar. we got to continue to keep the thing lit up. Listen, if you're comfortable, you're, you're not where you need to be. I'm just telling you, because right now, it is not a feel-good situation in the spirit. You want to know why? Because the spirit's forward-looking. And I'm telling you, you have no idea what's in store. You have no idea how much you're going to stop. And if I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. But you're going to stop it. (laughs) The church is going to stop it. I am not watching this thing go on again. But it's about to happen again. But on our watch, it shouldn't happen. It says whatever we permit on the earth is permitted in heaven. Whatever we forbid is forbidden. Whatever we permit is permitted. I mean, you bring Jesus into it. Another hard saying, you know, because not many people see that. Listen, did you know that Paul's letters, when he says you, in Greek, you is plural. See, right there, your gospel is, is crumbling. Your gospel is, is crumbling because you thought that Paul was talking to you personally. But every time that he spoke, he was talking about the congregation. All of us. Okay. I'll lighten up. I'm going to talk about animals on the ark here in a minute. <laughs> we're, we're going to talk about grilling. No, you, you see, the thing of it is, is you got to take your medicine. You got to take your vegetables. You got to have a balanced diet because you saw what happened in the last three years. Where were all the healing evangelists? Oh, so God only heals when there isn't a disease of the week. So, like, like a certain level, and I almost said it, I don't want to get knocked off the air. I got a talking code. Everybody's like, what? Why don't you just tell us? It's like, yeah, that would be my last week. I'd be writing you from jail or, you know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be online. I have to, I have to talk in code because the algorithms. 
I mean, you're worried about Sasquatch. I'm worried about algorithms, you know. <laughs> there is always empty seats for witches and Sasquatches and aliens. There are always empty seats up here in front. Because what you're doing is not working. So come up here in front. Try it up here three feet from me. I'm not, I'm not afraid. Listen, listen. I've already died. So you have too. Now you live. It's your life that you live is not your own now. You live by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Amen. Okay. All right. So here's anyone that eats this unworthy is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. It's like, well, you're preaching condemnation. You're preaching, you know, all the. It's like, no, Paul did this. That's pretty. This is, but that's enough. Th this, this dispensation we're in started with the Holy Spirit. When Jesus breathed on the disciples, he was saying, receive the Holy Spirit. He's saying, listen, my breath, my breath is the Holy Spirit's breath. He was coaching them that when this comes, this event, the Holy Spirit is a person, it's from me. So he breathed on the disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit, showing them that this was the next thing. So when the Holy Spirit came, that started the whole thing that we're in now. Okay, so there is no new revelation. The camels aren't coming. I've heard that prophecy for 10 years. If I see a, I, I mean, I'm just telling you. If I see, a, I hear another camel prophecy. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. My flip phone is faster than a camel. <laughs> I don't even have it anymore. It's been run over a couple times. Okay. So. For if you eat the bread and drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you, are you, everybody listening? Because there's no way out of this because you heard it. If you eat this without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. I have never, I have never heard this. I mean, I know it's been spoken, but, you, you know, they lightly tread over it or they, they go really fast over it and, like, let's go on to the chicken dinner or the bingo night and, let, you know, not, not here. But what I'm saying is, is that this is life and death. What did it say about your tongue? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. I mean, I need to hear another good sermon about the tongue because I'm getting hit all, all kinds of stuff. People's tongues are like, like like loaded weapons that are just like random shots. You got to be kidding me. You're going to waste your ammo on each other? Come on now. Somebody's got to, you, you could need to take this up and I'm going to stay home. You all need to take this up. All you students, you need to lip it up. You need to get your clips and just like Arnold Schwarzenegger, duct tape them together so you have two clips and just put one in and... and and just start, just empty your clips, and then just reload. There's enough word here. The devil does not know how to handle someone who is not afraid. You got to be fully convinced. I want to become the least. I want you to become the least in the kingdom. I want you to not care if you ever get the microphone, if you ever write a book. I want you to wake up swinging and praying in tongues and act like a wild person like you do at the ball games. I don't need to go to Green Bay to act wild. I can come to church. You guys, you guys, don't come here with your shirts off. I'm serious. It's so interesting. We can act crazy at the sports games. And I notice the cold doesn't bother you when you're at the game, but it bothers you when it's too cold in church. Uh -oh. Pastor, Pastor Wayne. But, but you'll yell at your team with your cheese hat on. That's all you have on. <laughs> cheese, a cheese head. 
no shirt, green paint. It's not even a nice color. It's kind of flat color, you know? Anyway, all right, getting back to the table of the Lord. I need to get you to laugh, loosen up a little bit, because what I'm about to say, you're going to be crying. You're going to be crying. (laughs) Okay, so you're drinking judgment on yourself. That's pretty serious. So it would probably be better. I wish people had the same fear about hell, about other things. Like, listen, if I do this, is this going to cause somebody else to sin that's weak in faith? Like, like, uh, you know, like my pastor, I will be assistant pastors twice. And my pastor one day, he felt so bad he was like in tears because he's a, he likes to cook. So he was at the market and he picked up um, wine, cooking wine. And he doesn't drink. He would never drink, just like I would never drink. I would, I, I'm just telling you. See, I'm being transparent because I, I don't know, I don't know even how much time we have. This might be my last message. So I'm just going to let it fly. The things you think are okay, because there's weak people in weak faith that Paul said, you don't do it because you love them. So why would you even risk it? Especially if a person's coming out of something, it's kind of confusing to think it's okay when I just left it to become a Christian. Whoa, I'm going to, you know what? I want a CD of that. That's, that is good. Because that was the Spirit of God. Okay, so here Paul is saying, listen, you've got to be careful that what you do is that you're thinking about others because you're jeopardizing the well-being of the whole church. Of the, I mean, that's why Paul said, listen, turn that one over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh during the service. So I'm sure they took the offering first. I mean, based on the way things are today. I mean, we take the offering first and then hand them over to Satan. Tell him you better empty out your account because you're about to meet your maker, you know. They turn him, and sell, turn him over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh. He said, I haven't seen this type of sin in the world. This is part of the church service. He said, when the spirit of the Lord is there with you and I am with you in spirit, turn this one over to Satan. I just have to balance it out. It's not all about faith. It's about love. And don't throw hope out. What about hope? When's the last time you heard a good sermon on hope? I mean, sometimes I just need a good sermon on hope. I mean, I got to pray in tongues just to love you. (laughs) And I don't have any faith sometimes. See, no ministers will say that. I, I mean, most of what you see at worthiness is not faith. It's actually grace and mercy, and it's obedience. I mean, I don't pray. I've, I don't, Kathy will tell you. We, I don't remember the last time I prayed for money. I don't pray for money. I don't look at money. I'm looking at the kingdom of God, and he's supplying my addiction to promoting the kingdom of God. He's, he's, he's going to promote the kingdom if you're available, you can be a distribution center, but you got to not stare at it. I mean, just to quote Jesus, because he said that the seek ye first the kingdom and his, that righteousness and all these other things will be added to you as well. It, it, it works. I mean, you've seen it. It's a, just a little adjustment, but it's hard for a rich man to get to heaven. It's, a, it's just a little adjustment, but the rich man couldn't, couldn't handle it. You have to pass your money test. You have to pass this test. Okay, so here it is. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. Because if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, which is his body, and it's also the body. Okay, that is why many of you... It says you're drinking God's judgment on yourself. Any, are, are you ready for this? Oh, my gosh. Are you ready for this? He, this guy, this apostle, his thought process is this. He talks about judgment, and then he breathes, and then he says this in the same thought. He says that 
You're eating and drinking God's judgment on yourself, and that is why many of you are weak and sick and have died. How many books are written on this? How many shows have you seen on, on uh, your, your favorite program on this? I guarantee you, you probably won't be allowed to talk about this. Your book won't sell. I was going to say something, but then all the ministers are going to write a book on it because, but if you want to, there are certain subjects that you, I, I mean, I'm not going to say because they're going to go write books on it, then you're going to buy them, which I don't want you to do either. But there are certain subjects, if you write a book on it, I guarantee you they're going to call on you to be on TV and your book will go through the roof, through the roof right now. But I'm not telling you what it is because you'll go and do it. But I can tell you subjects that if you write on it, You'll be the least popular. Bambi will be more popular than you are. <laughs> but what you need is those things that are not popular for some reason. I'm getting hit by the power of God right now, so I don't know how much more I can take of this. Mm, man. Well, it is nine o'clock. But what I'm feeling right now, I would give up Culver's and let them close without me being at the drive-thru. Because I crave, I crave my Lord. I crave not only the message and the anointing, I crave him. I crave his heart. He wants us to come up to the mountain and honor him for being faithful on what he has done for us. And he waits for his people to present themselves to him in this time right now and be healed. Thank goodness Paul is fair. He says, but, but, if you examine yourself, the word there is judge yourself, but I mean, you know, that's a little hard, you know. But. This is where people get up and say they're going to the bathroom and they never come back, you know. And it, because if you judge yourself, it says you won't be judged. It says, so you, you judge yourself, examine yourself. We would not be judged by God in this way. Oh my gosh, what is this way? Well, we, we have to go back. This does not go over. Just so you know, I'm probably going to, they're going to ask for my faith, my faith certificate back, my, my degree. It says here that when we eat and drink unworthily, not honoring the Lord, we drink judgment upon ourselves. That is why some of you are sick and weak, and some of you have died. This is the most important message I've ever preached. It's the most unpopular message. You know, at the end, at the end I get to preach this. But this is what I'm leaving you with. I'm gonna leave you with this. This is, what, this is what's gonna happen, is you're gonna to gather together and you're gonna wait for each other and you're gonna honor the Lord, you're gonna honor each other, and you're gonna drink life into your body. You're gonna eat life into your body. And you're, you're gonna, you're gonna, when you do that, you're going to love, you're going to prosper, you're gonna be healthy and, and strong, not weak. You're, you're not gonna die early. Uh, you're gonna give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, shall men give unto your bosom. All the promises are going to come to tr pass, but it's because you examine yourself. Wow. 
Yet when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined. Well, dying early is a little... (laughs) But it says... That's why it says, hand that one over to Satan for the destruction of flesh so that his soul will be saved. I mean, does it still say that in there or is it taken out? I love you all. I'm preaching this mostly for them, just so you know. I, I, it, it, as soon as I take off and the wheels are up in the well of the airplane, then it's for you. But I mean, right now... <laughs> When, you're, when I'm out of range. No, listen, being a Christian, being a Christian, should, you should be full of joy. But it should be unspeakable. You should be so drunk all the time in the Spirit that you have to really concentrate to speak. And that's why it's better just to keep your words few and your actions big. It's better just to do it and talk about it later than be like most ministries which talk about it and they're clouds without rain. I mean, just to bring the Bible into it. No, the only reason I'm saying this is because I don't even consider myself a, a, a minister. I'm Kevin and I have a message. And I want to I wanna share it with everybody. And that is, is that God is a good God. Work a lot. Okay, this is the mentality that James had about himself towards the Lord. And he was a big boy. You're you're just a little, you're a pert. You're not an expert. You're a pert. You don't want to be on TV. You don't want to have a book. You don't want, you don't want this stuff. What you want is to be known by God. You want to be the one that is at the bottom of the list where everybody says no to God and you say yes. That's what I'm training at Warrior Notes. Amen. All you students, I want it to default to you because God can depend upon you. God knows he can call you and you'll, you'll buy that van for that church. You'll build that house for the orphans and the widows. You'll give food out. You'll give your last meal and know that God's going to pay you back. You save your $1,000 for that prayer shawl that that guy's selling with his anointing on it. You give that money to somebody who can't pay you back. Come on. The camels aren't coming. Jesus has already came. I ain't waiting for some camel, some stale goods. Look at y'all. Can't believe he's saying, I don't even know what he's talking about. He's like, for, just forget it. Just forget it. I've heard that the camels are coming for 10 years. I've never seen one come to my house yet. Not, not a one hump, not a two hump. Not. I've had a llama spit on me in the last 10 years. A couple Christians too. A couple ministers, you know. How about you? Your provision has been given to you and you're hidden in Christ, which means you're not visible to some people, which is really good. You think that your low position is a disadvantage. You have no idea. You're not even in someone's scope. That's what you want. Is everybody hear me? Okay. All right, so he says... He says this, I'm a slave. I'm writing to the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad. Okay, I'm going to walk over here. You can understand that they, they should have a little bit of interaction. I'll be right back, okay? <laughs> All right, so it says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind, I'm going to, I'm going to take it easy, you know, so you guys don't have separation anxiety. <laughs> I'm going to walk down this aisle. You guys got to get over this stuff. I mean, how long am I going to be with you? Really, really, how long do you think I'm going to still do that? It's just seven years coming up. Seven years coming up October 6th. And I'm really done. I'm done with phase one. Seven years is done. The next phase... I have never said this ever in my life, but I'm actually hot in this church. 
I've never said that. It's the first time. I'm actually sweating. Pastor Wayne's clicking right now. That's the key. That's the sign. Okay. It says here. Okay. So this is when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. <laughs> so it's really interesting. When you, when, you, when you go for training to be a jet pilot or any type of pilot, especially jet pilots, it's really interesting. You think you're going to spend all this time on certain subjects, and what you do is you, you watch films of cra crashes and investigations and stupid people doing stupid things. And after a while, you're like, you know what? You, you start thinking, is this really what I want to do? You know, like, like when I was growing up, I would watch the school bus movies. You know, what, what happens when you don't wear your seatbelt? And they would scare you into wearing your seatbelt. They would show movies like, I don't know, maybe, I mean, you know, I grew up, we, we had to hide under our desk when the uh, World War III alarm went off, you know, that there was going to be an incoming, you know. We used to go to the cellar. I used to get confused. I was so scared. I started doing the Pledge of Allegiance and <laughs> run to the cellar. <laughs> I, I would, all, all, this, all this stuff I grew up with, you know. And yet, and yet you know, all that rice and beans, yet we still haven't used it. And it's something that when troubles come, Paul, uh, uh, James was saying, listen, here's the things that you need to consider is, is consider the fact that it's an opportunity for great joy. Now, the reason they're saying it, now, you're going to feel a separation. I'm going to be back. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Whoa. <laughs> Yay. All right. All right. So <laughs> joy is a spiritual personality trait of the Holy Spirit. So joy, all the fruit of the Spirit is, is, is God's personality. It's not, it's not uh, fun. It's not happiness. It's not solical. So joy, consider it joy when you encounter these things. This is not going to work. I feel like I'm wrapped in foil. <laughs> My teeth are actually rattling inside of me. I'm really challenging my staff right back here now. This is the thing that you got to realize is that what he's saying is when you get into trouble, when you have troubles, which no one wants to talk about, but it's coming again. And so I'm, I'm telling you right now, we don't have to be participants in it. If we get our oil and our, our wicks ready, we can be ready for this, but we got to be smart. We got to know what's coming next. And so I'm going to talk about that this weekend. But this right here is saying tap in to the traits, the character of God, namely joy. So tap into joy. Consider it joy when you go, you go into all kinds of tests and trials. Because that causes the Holy Spirit to come on the scene. Man, this is worse than today in the jet engine it sound. It's like... I'm, I'm going to have to opt out soon. I love you all, but I feel like I have my helmet on. 600 miles an hour. With fire coming out the back, you know. It says, this is an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can ever experience. You tap into it in the hardship it's not always available to you in the fire tunnel or in hands laying on you. Sometimes it's through hardship. Sometimes it's in hardship. Nobody wants to talk about this. But my greatest times with the Lord is when I can't go on. Amen. And I'm just telling you, I'm just being honest with you. I actually ride on the crest of that wave every day where I don't think I can go another day but I find myself waking up and doing it twice as good because I learned something. Amen. I don't want to be strong. I want to be weak because that's when God's power is revealed. That's what Paul's key was to living that life. I'm going to leave right now. Good luck with your foil room here. It's like foil. Okay. I'm not doing that again. 
my, te my teeth, I feel like I was chewing on foil gum. I felt like I was inside. Yeah, I, I need more than that. <laughs> Character of God, it's a, every time you go through a hardship, it is your opportunity. It is the doorway to tap into the supernatural. It's not in buying my books. It's not in giving in the offering. It's not if you have a jacket waved over you. Those things all worked. But God has burnt that box and he's gone on to something else. It's called, it's called destruction of the flesh. It's a new move. It's the new move of God, a destruction of the flesh. <laughs> we got six people participating in it. <laughs> can you imagine me putting a course up? It would be my best course. But can you imagine destruction of the flesh? That's, I mean, that's what Paul said, destruction of the flesh. You got to choose who you're going to serve this day, either you're going to yield to the Spirit or you're going to yield to the flesh. But if you yield to the flesh, Paul said you can't please God. He said you actually are an enemy of God. It says that the flesh is an enemy of God. It doesn't want to do anything that God, it will not submit. Submit. It is an enemy. That's not preached anymore. But see, on my watch, you're going to get the whole Thanksgiving dinner. You're going to get it all. You're not just going to pick and choose deliverance or healing. You know, what are you going to need next week? You're going to need some money to pay your bills. So you focus and you're, you're healthy. You're healthy, but you need to pay your mortgage, which is a death grip. But that goes over well. But you look it up. Death grip. Mort, death, grip, gauge. Death grip. So you want one of those? Yeah, I'll take two. Two death grips? See, no one will preach this. Oh, it's okay to borrow, is it? You're not supposed to be in debt to anyone, except to love them. Anyway, like I said, we have to stay up there where God has drawn the line and not keep whittling it down to where we have seven pages left in our Bible. And two of them are maps. <laughs> You know, it says, you are here. <laughs> and you look, and it's the wilderness of sin. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> Listen, when you finally just give it all up, you can preach like this. You just finally just, you know what? Whether I live or die, it's gain. At what point do you just like give it all up and just say, you know what? The rest of my life is going to be Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. It's just going to be on your tombstone. It's going to be everything that's known about you was that the Lord himself ministered through you. That when somebody meets you, it's like I met Jesus. It's like Jesus laid his hand on me. You know, it was, it was like Jesus took that person over and spoke For you know, verse, this is um, verse 3 of chapter 1 of James. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. My throttle in the spirit is duct taped in the full position. I don't even worry about that anymore. His power is present. His power is working miracles in me, in my body, in your body. He's working out everything for your good right now. He's, he knows on credit that you're going to get over yourself. So he, he bought you anyway at the worst. He bought you. He, 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 on credit, he did this, knowing that someday you're going to stop bowing to the calf and you're going to go up the mountain. And you're going to say, thank you for what you've done. Come on now. That's the message for the whole world right now. Man, you know, we might not even have tomorrow. I mean, that's where it's at with me. I'm not wait waiting for the disease of the week. 
I'm not waiting for them to blame it on another animal. So I'm knowing my faith is tested that that endurance is being developed in me. So I'm not going to back off. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not backing off. I'm not, I'm not, even if you, if you get mad at me, if you plead with me, if, whether you give an offering or not an offering, whether you, you know, it doesn't matter to me anymore. What matters is, is eternity. And eternity, people in heaven right now who have labored hard, they have labored so hard and sown in tears. Pastor Jerry, I just saw Pastor Jerry back there, labored. He fell asleep. The Lord showed me he would fall asleep in tears as he labored right here. And he's here tonight. I just saw him. Unless it's his angel. But you know what? He, I know in the spirit that people like him are in heaven too. And they're like, go, preach. But they're saying, they're not just saying, do what we did. They're saying, build upon the foundation that we laid. We're the finishers. We're the ones that come in. And, and just like Pastor Wayne, he waits till the last week to, to do all the painting and everything. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I walk in, and like, we, we, we start in like three hours, and they're like tearing, tearing down the tape, the, 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 the masking tape. Oh, don't touch that wall. You know. <laughs> but we're, we're at the end of the age. We're the finishers. Yes. We're like the ones that come in and do the crown molding yeah. and the extra air conditioners. <laughs> no, we're the ones that are finishing up. We are not to do the same sermons. We're to build upon that. Let's go on to the greater things. It says, don't talk about resurrection of dead and baptisms and all these other things. We're going to go on. It says, well, we, we're still arguing about all that stuff. We don't even know if tongues is for today, some of us. You got to be kidding me. Come on. When are we going to start speaking from the other realm? When are we going to start to shift so that people fall into the supernatural? When we say something from the other realm that's adding to what has already been established. I have not, I was not born to build the foundation. I was not built. I'm not going to rebuild it. I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm not writing scripture. I'm still trying to live it. <laughs> I mean, I got enough to live. I got to work on what I already got. I don't need anything else. You want to know about Sasquatches and UFOs? Forget about it. You have no idea what this world was like. You would understand everything. What I was shown, I understand all this stuff. But I'm not supposed to go there. Maybe with coffee tomorrow I will. But... <laughs> We're not supposed to concentrate on things because that is, that is residual from the past. You don't see those ugly creatures. You don't see the ugly creatures walking around. They're stone. They're in fossils. You, we see you. You're the image of God. But, you know, the stuff that, that didn't make the cut, it did, it's fossils. It's destroyed. The genetics that were bad. It's gone. Wow. And they're going to try to do it again. And it's going to be gone again. That's what Daniel says. If you read chapter 1 and the vision that Daniel interpreted, the ten toes at the end of the age, the clay and the iron was put together and it, and it says they did not take. They did not mix. Who's they? Well, you're supposed to go back and find out what it is. It doesn't say who they were. I've never met they. They make all the laws and all the rules. It's they. they. They said that. I've never met they. But it's always they. Well, they don't like you. Like, who's they? <laughs> they don't agree with you. Well, who's they? You never meet them. But see, in the, at the end, 
they will try it again. And it will not mix. I'm just saying. And that's why I'm going to talk about it tomorrow morning, coffee talk, because I'm going to tell you, you kill every mosquito that you see. And I'm not kidding you. No more mosquitoes. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. Make sure you get rid of every mosquito. Don't give them a reason. Moving on, backing out of the cave, get the car ready. <laughs> Red light's still on the camera. We're still online, so they didn't get it. Okay, so if you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. Your faith is tested. It's a positive thing. It's not a bad thing. What is your faith being tested? It's when God tells you something and it doesn't happen. It's when you're tested that you're going to opt out. You're tested because Satan wants to see if you'll opt out. <laughs> Dear Lord, do you realize if it wasn't for somebody being obedient, this would still be a bowling alley? I mean, do you realize that someone had to do something... Someone had to be obedient. Someone had to stay in there when they were tested. Someone had to lay the foundation. But I'm not laying the foundation. Somebody already did. And this is what James was speaking from. He's saying, listen, these difficulties that you're going through, it's for your advancement. It's so that you can be the finisher, not redo something that's already done. I am tired of hearing the, all the different angles on different subjects. Just let it go. How about let's just love one another? <laughs> so, I mean, since it is the greatest, but you wouldn't think so. But you know it. What I want to do is I want to start the love movement. We, we had the word of faith movement. We had a word of hope. How about the word of love? Okay, that's going to go. <laughs> that, because that's. We have been taught that love is some kind of mushy thing that's a feeling that comes and goes, and it's based on attraction and money and all kinds of other things. It's based on all the, he's, the Satan has completely corrupted the way that we think. But love is our life is not our own, and we would die for somebody. That was how Jesus displayed the greatest love of all, was you die for someone else. You don't consider your life worth anything for yourself, but you would lay it down for someone else. And this is the biggest one. You, you would lay it down for your enemy. I mean, you, you, you could lay it down for a friend. Can you lay it down for your enemy? Because Jesus did. Jesus laid it down for people that hated him and killed him. And he said, forgive him, Father. You know, and all you've had happen is the Culver's forgot your cheese in their order. And you're, you're upset. But I'm talking about Jesus like, you know. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get a coupon from Culver's. I, I, I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that they like send me, you know, thanks for promoting us, you know. No, I'm just kidding. I really, I don't really eat, eat that much anyway. I'm on that supernatural diet. I can not eat and gain weight. It's, it's the most amazing thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm riding this wave to see how many days I can go without eating and gain weight. It's just amazing. It's supernatural. But you know what's even more supernatural? Loving people. Loving people is the most supernatural thing. I mean, but it is the least popular on TV shows. It's the least popular in books. But if I write a book on I met Lazarus or I met Enoch or whatever, that's why I don't write one on meeting Enoch, even though I met him. Well, I didn't meet him. I watched him do his thing, you know. Beam me aboard, Scotty. You know, it's just amazing. I'm not giving a signal. So I just, you know. 
Okay. So make sure you ask to be empowered by the trials and tests of your faith. Let God put you in a situation where he says, I trust you. I trust him. I trust her. They're not going to, they're not going to manipulate. They're not going to post online what they need with, with a contact number. That is not faith. It's not faith. Faith is you keep your mouth shut and you do things for people that can't pay you back and you watch God get off his throne and do miracles every day. We see a miracle warning note sometimes every 20 minutes. And the reason why is we're doing things for people that can't pass back because God has to pass back and, and uh, he's off his throne a lot. Because we're going to minister to people that can't pay us back because that is the purest form of faith is that I'm not going to jimmy with your emotions. I don't tell you any of my needs. My needs are met according to his riches and glory, not your wallet. So what's in your wallet? No. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to um, close here. It's still early. I mean, Alaska, it's still, sun's still up. Okay, so it stirs up power from within you when you're tested. Your faith is tested. So why would you want it to come another way? See, no one's saying this stuff. You know, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I understand that. But James says faith comes by doing the word of God, then doing it and doing it and doing it. So guess what? James, like his itinerary is like two places every year. In other words, James doesn't get preached hardly at all. In fact, do you know that the councils that met didn't allow James into the Bible? Did you see the notes of the councils that met for the canon? James was booted out. So was Jude, because Jude talked, talked and quoted Enoch. And they had kicked Enoch out. And Enoch is going to have something to say about that. But they, they did not want James in there, because James was too hard. But James, I believe, was a pastor. I believe he was a half-brother. You know, I don't care if he's a quarter brother. <laughs> For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up that power. Okay, so let it grow, James says. Let it fly. Let it fly. Let it grow. Let it happen. For when your endurance is fully developed, when your endurance, not your faith, when your endurance is fully developed. Can you believe this is in the Bible? This is a New Living Translation. The NLT. When it's fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. That sounds like prosperity to me. Yes, needing nothing? Yes, needing nothing? I absolutely need nothing. I absolutely need nothing. But what I want is I want to wrap this up in my lifetime. I don't want your children to have to, to take the helm. I, I mean, I'm training them to, because no one else will. No one else does. That's why we're in the condition we are, because no one thought it was going to go on. Right. But after many, many years of repeating the same circuit in the desert, I think somebody should stand up and say, you know what? This whole thing is rigged, and there, conspiracies are absolutely the truth. Because you know, all the signs are there. That it's all there. I mean, old math, new math, slide rule, abacus, counting your toes. 
it doesn't add up except if it's being manipulated. If, if the God of this world, small g, is in charge. If he is in charge of the world, which he is, big hornet's nest, don't even write me, don't waste the digital ink. This is a big hornet's nest. God is not in control of the world. Paul said strictly that the small g God is, in, is the prince of the power of the air. He is in charge. It says that everybody, even you, he said, used to be under his power, doing his bidding. You had no resistance to him. But now, because you've come in, now you've been translated over, then now you can say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. You can say no. You can put your foot down and say no, not on my watch. The devil's not going to do it on my watch. The Antichrist isn't coming into power in my watch. The church is going to stay here and do the harvest. We're not going to hide in a cave watching our, our end time DVDs. Listen, when he comes, it's going to be a thief in the night. Ten, wi- ten virgins that saved themselves will all be asleep. Ten virgins, all of them fell asleep. Ten virgins, all of them fell asleep. Ten virgins, all of them, were saving themselves for the Lord, fell asleep. Did I mention ten? All ten fell asleep. But only five were wise enough to not watch their DVDs of the end times. They were out working and they were well supplied with oil. They were, they had trimmed and were ready. They had enough to last. And this is the thing that's going to happen. The only reason this message has to go forth tonight, and I wouldn't be surprised, I wouldn't be surprised if this is my last message. It won't even surprise me if this is it tonight. I'm telling you why, is that no one, no one wants to stand up and own it, is that after 2,000 years of the power of God being on the earth through the church, and God's will is the church, is, is God should be able to operate in the church as he wills, but he can't because we have competition and we have our own wills involved, and everybody has their take on it. And nobody wants to stand up and say, listen, this is going to be done in unity because we all believe that the entrance into the supernatural and into what God has for us is through the narrow way, which requires us to barely make it. This is what I saw. And this is what, no, I've waited and waited, but no one's saying this. What I saw was, it is hard and few find it. You wouldn't believe it. The people that are in heaven, they're they're people that like are totally sold out. They're totally sold out. I didn't meet anybody that was marginal. There was one guy, okay, I take it back. There was one guy that just, he barely made it in. He was skipping like a little girl down through paradise. He was so happy that he made it. But I don't want to be him. I have a chance to make champions out of all of you. I have a chance to like allow the spirit to groom. All of you have a chance to make champions, vo- warriors, victorious warriors. They know they're coming back. They're like Abraham. Me and my son are going to go and worship God and we're going to be back. That's what Abraham said. That's faith. Why? Because God told him. That his only son, that son, there will be an an inheritance and a group on the earth that is more dominant than the stars and the sand that's on the seashore shall be your inheritance of, of people through that son. Okay, so he said, me and the boy are going to go worship and we'll be back. He said that because he knew that he was going to raise that knife and it didn't matter It didn't matter because if he has to raise him from the dead, he's going to because God does not lie. And that's what I'm talking about here is that the kind of faith I'm talking about here in the Bible, you know, the thing we believe, they call it a thing now, I guess. It's not a thing. It's a person. Okay, this, this says that we 
are going to grow. It says we're going to grow and we're going to, this endurance is going to be until there's nothing missing and nothing lacking is one translation. So verse 5 says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. And this is how I want to close this tonight, even though I want to get through 27, I got through 5, is the thing you should be asking for is not that your bills are paid. You, you know, you can do that. But that's kind of like, that's kind of like asking the checkout person what the, what the, the monthly income is and, I, and the bottom line on the profitability of the grocery store. It's like the pig is not going to be able to tell you that f- from the counter. There's certain people that know that data and they run that. But why would you want to complain about the profit margin to a person who just wants to put groceries in a bag and walk away without getting killed and yelled at? In other words, why would you do the peripheral thing like, like okay, as soon as that demon raises his head, as soon as this bill comes, I'm going to go in tongues, heavy tongues on this. I'm just telling you, we're doing the wrong thing. This can all be resolved very quickly. And this is how it can be resolved. If you need wisdom, you should ask our generous God. The reason it's as generous is because you're going to get it all. Because what you need is understanding. Listen, he could pay your bill by an angel. But then next week, you're going to need something else. Your kids will listen to you for a week because they got caught. That doesn't fix the problem. I don't want to just be caught. All of you, you're serving God because you you don't want to get caught. You're serving God out of fear instead of serving out of love. Okay, I'm glad that I got through the introduction here. And um, tomorrow morning, we're going to start again with coffee talk at 9. I'm going to talk about the things that nobody wants to talk about. But that, you know, the Congress is meeting and talking about these things. And I've known for 20, 30 years all this stuff. It's just time to open that can. It's just time to open the can. You know, there's, there's an attitude. Like in Texas, you go to Texas, they shoot and then they ask questions. No, if you look at the, how many gun owners are registered in Wisconsin, I just guarantee you, they're probably going to skip your state for, like, like you know what, they're not going to go door to door. I'm only saying that, I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying this thing for a totally different thing than you think. What I'm telling you is, is that the devil has a list of people he doesn't want to mess with. Those are people that are going to waste his time saying no to him. He's looking for weak people that have not overcome. He doesn't, he wants a quick victim. He wants a quick little, you know, notch in his, in his little whatever. The bottom line is this, is that the, the, the body of Christ that Jesus left on the earth is to rule and reign. And they're supposed to have an authority and a stomp in their foot and a, a good anointed no. You know, and, and tell God yes, but tell the devil no. And you'd be surprised. Okay, so I want you to start to focus on examining yourself, judging yourself. And then, once you get rid of that telephone pole in your eye, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to collect them all, and I'm going to build a nice big building for you out of it. I'm going to take all that lumber. You just remove the, the telephone pole in your own eye. Then you're going to be able to see clearly the sawdust in someone else's eye. But then you'll get a building out of it. We have enough lumber in our own eyes to build a nice church. We need to let it go. Listen, we need to judge ourselves. 
So, once again, the message is your entrance into a high level of advancement. Subtitle, The Art of Working on Yourself. <laughs> and that's the end. I love you all. Now, now there's time for impartation too. Because I have a microwave in my room. I can always throw the Culver's in there. Just, I mean, 33 seconds and the, that, that fake cheese just melts. Just like, no, it's not fake. It's real cheese. It's real cheese. The fake won't, the fake will sit there and laugh in the microwave. That the fake cheese is what they use for caulking around your bathtub. <laughs> I'm serious. It, it, it'll survive. It'll survive. They call it American cheese, like it's supposed to be patriotic, you know. <laughs> but if you look at the ingredients, it says cheese food. <laughs> There's a reason why it's called cheese food. It's just like potted meat product. Nobody really knows what that is. It's just like spam. You open it up. And there's a mystery gel on top. <laughs> Nobody's been able to identify it. Let me tell you something. If your dog doesn't eat it, you shouldn't eat it. <laughs> okay, so it's impartation time. I don't want to quit. Actually, if I had my way, we'd be here till midnight. You know, that's, that's the way it would be. Because you need the Word of God. You need preached to. And I believe you're getting that here. And I believe there are avenues to do that. Of course, I'm not like blaming anybody or anything. I'm just doing it. But what I'm saying is it'd be nice if I had more than a couple people spending, spending your money and actually preaching the messages that are supposed to be preached right now. I mean, actually, if you're going to support somebody, there better be fire coming out of their mouth. And that fire should be from heaven. That's all I'm saying to you is, is let's get out of the pathetic movement and get into the prophetic. Yes. Let's, let's, get, let's get in a connection with the fire and let's do the word of God from a place of joy. Amen. Knowing that we're going to be rewarded. You, you know, I, the goal that you should have when I was in heaven, the goal that I saw you, everyone should have is you should be a, known as a sign and a wonder to God and to people. That people should know you as a sign and a wonder. A sign. And, 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 and you're going to wake up tomorrow morning and you're going to be glad that no one understands you because it's a sure sign that you're a wonder. <laughs> there, listen, you know how, how your animals... They go like this, and they look. <laughs> that is a good thing. You don't want the world to accept you. Jesus has accepted you. You want people to come out from among them and be separate. That's the people you want to be around. Those are the clouds that have rain. Man, I feel the power of God. Oh my God, I feel power. Man, I didn't even listen to Bethel music today. I did. I didn't even listen to my favorite preacher. I didn't have an angel come. I didn't have anybody like me on Facebook. And I feel the power of God. I feel, why? But why? Because all of us have to tap in to what was written about us, which is possibly going to be something concerning Jeremiah. You know, you're my battle axe. You're my plumb line. Don't look at their faces. <laughs> Don't look at their faces. Speak my word, you know. Man, the power of God's here. The, the resurrection power of God's here. Hey, let's repent. Yes. Let's try something new. It's like this new, it's this new doctrine called repent. Let's repent. No, let's repent. You know what? I'll be the first to repent. I want to repent. I want to repent because I should know better. I should know better than to doubt God. But this morning, I had a war going on because I... I had this whole thing set up. 
and the weather didn't check in with me. <laughs> and I had every, you wouldn't believe it. I had the best. But I said, no, we're going to do it. We're not, we're not, we're going to do it. Heading to the airport, we're going to do it. Thunder, lightning, rain. No problem. Keep checking. It's going to quit. Just kept talking inside the, the airport to the kids. Check again. It's still raining. Okay, no problem. 15 more minutes, it's, it's going to be fine. And then I looked. Instead of seeing a cloud the size of a man's hand, I saw a blue sky the size of a man's hand. And I knew it. I knew it. I got, I, I, I got, I got, I call it the spatula effect. I, I work on the devil until he blinks. You just got to stand your ground until he gets nervous. And he'll get a little stress crack. And, it, and his lip starts quivering. And he's like looking at you like, I'll get you my pretty. And I'm like, Toto, get behind me. Annie Am, is that you on the bicycle? <laughs> no. I'm telling you by the power of God, the Spirit of God, that blue sky is coming. There's going to be a hole made, but it's a spatula effect. The Lord taught me that faith is getting enough area in between to leverage the devil where you just get a spatula in there. And there's no, you know, that one pound hamburger, you left it on too long on one side. I ain't sacrificing that one pounder. And certainly that cow wouldn't want me to. So I'm going to get some room. I'm going to get some, and that's what I do in prayer. It's my secret. My secret in prayer is this. I don't give up. I don't care. I don't care if my mentors coach me. I don't care if somebody says, I don't care who they are. The devil's going to blink. I'm telling you by the power of God. The devil, the, the, listen to me online, all over the world. The power of God is here. The Lord is saying the devil's going to blink. He's going to flinch. So you put that spatula in there and you work it until, and, then, and then this is what Jesus taught me. It's going to be, it's going to be in, in uh, something I'm writing right now, a new book. And I'm one of 45 that I'm writing right now. And I'm... I, he taught me how to, he just stay in there and you just go into warfare tongues if you have to. You just go into tongues and you pray in tongues and you speak the word of God and you just keep, you just keep, keep it going. And all of a sudden the Lord said, you'll get some space in there and then you know you got them. Amen. You know you got them. And you just keep going. Before you know it, you're flipping that one pounder over and you're cooking the other side. It must be time to quit. I'm talking about food. <laughs> now, all of you, all of you by the power of God, I don't have to call you out. I don't have to lay hands on you. I don't have to prophesy over you individually. I am delivering the word of the Lord to you. I'm telling you, you want to receive your healing? You, you want to receive financial help, miracles? You want your crops to double and triple and quadruple? Then you have to side with what the Lord has already said He's already established the covenant by sitting at a table together and remembering what he said until he comes. Remembering what he did until he comes. All together as one. All of us. We're on the same team. It's the same finish line. Within, within a half hour after that one little hole, I was up in the air ripping the skies up over Oshkosh. <laughs> it's because you just don't take no for an answer. This is, you, you are sent, you're not went. You're being told by the Lord to do something. You're on this earth to finish everything up. To, to wrap it up. Oh. Now, I used to just, I, I, walk, I usually just walk away right now. 
but I'm tired of just doing that because I, I know what needs to happen and I don't tell you. I, I know exact, every service I walk away and it never finishes exactly how I saw it. And the reason why is you guys need some sort of permission to do what you're supposed to do as a congregation and that is jump in. I don't know what you're waiting for. It's by the grace of God that I can even stand. Every time I preach, I can hardly stand. I can hardly form my words. I feel like I'm being electrocuted constantly for these seven years. Right now, the Lord is saying, drink. He's saying, do not hold back. That the Spirit of God is wanting you to be completely drunk in the Spirit right now. I'm telling you this because I used to walk away like they missed it. Kathy and I joke about it. We're just going to take the packages from heaven that people didn't claim. We're going to take them home. Put them, we'll put them and we'll take them home. We'll get them. We'll get all your benefits. But you know, our house is full of all that stuff that was supposed to go to you. I'm just telling you. We, we, we go to the room and we're like... And you know, after seven years, I mean, you know... I mean, well, think of all the ministers been in 40, 50 years. Well, I'm done at seven. The reason I'm done is because Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price for you. And now he wants you to recognize that and produce fruit in keeping with that repentance. Now, I have been on Mount Zion. I have been on the, on the side of Mount Zion. It's a city of David. I've been there in the flesh, but I've been in there in the spirit. I saw the spirits of just men, righteous men made perfect, standing there on display at the end of the age. I've already been there. I've already seen it. There's a book coming out about it in a, several years. So go ahead and put your rapture stuff away. I saw men being honored. I saw all of us able to be on display on Mount Zion, which is on the side of Jerusalem, the city of David. They, they call it the Temple Mount, but it's the Roman garrison. Oh, well. The city of David is where it was. Newsflash. So let the Muslims have it. See, that goes over well. There's no water up there on the Temple Mount. The water is the Gihon Spring, which is on, in, the, in the city of David on Mount Zion on the side. And they already found where they used to tie the sacrifice animals up. It's all underground. It's on the internet. It must be true. No. I'm telling you. You have no idea what God wants to do if you pray for wisdom. He's going to show you what's really going on. What he's doing is through the church. What he's doing is through the body of Christ. Individually and corporately. And how about if we just repent? Okay, everybody stand. Everybody stand. Now, to repent... I know, you, I know this because I've seen this. Repentance is not 360 degrees because you end up back where you were. Repentance is 180. It's, it's, it's essentially a turn away to the right direction, which was originally given to you. So you were given these things in Christ, the direction you're to go in, and the apostles preached, live accordingly. That is your faith, is you manifest through obedience. So turning back to the one true love and the one true plan for you is what I desire for you. That's what you desire. If we do this, this will change everything. So I turn from my own way. I turn from my own interpretation. I turn from thinking that, that anything is mine. I turn from trying to figure out what's going on in our country. I repent of trying to figure it out. I repent of trying to insert myself in things that I don't belong in. I, I repent 
of making decisions for you. You need to make the decisions. You need to decide who you're going to serve, and you're going to serve him fully. I'm telling you, all of us need to hear this. I need to hear this. I need to give him everything. I want your last day on earth to be your best. I want you to have no ammo left. I want you to have expelled everything that was given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so Lord, say it. Lord, Lord I, repent. I repent. I want to honor you. I want to acknowledge the Father right now for what you have done for me. I come to you. I will have no other God before me. I destroy the unholy altars. I will no longer run to them. I will no longer be addicted. I will only worship you. I break addiction right now. Every kind of sin that so easily entangles me. I let it go. I will have no other gods before me. Jesus Christ is my Savior. Now what just happened in here is better than any deliverance session. There is no way a devil can even talk to you right now. Let's pray in the spirit. Se se gola bere dressi to skiri dressi to skiri shi la bara dressi to. Se se gola bere dressi to la bara dressi to skiri shi do velo bara bere tra. Ela lo ela lo ela lo ela lo de shi no kene bara dressi to. Se se gori bere dressi to. Bringing forth, bringing forth those mysteries in the spirit, bringing forth into articulate speech. Bringing forth the mysteries, speaking forth. Shasho kole bere dresho to ti vala la betra. Elo eto shata. Elo eshato shika. Ha ha ha. Shasho kole bere dresho to Oh. Oh. Okay. So all right. So the spirit, the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord. I heard him clearly say that he's flipping it. He's flipping it on the devil. He's flipping it. He's flipping it. You got to destroy the altars. You got to destroy those unholy altars. Now I'm going to my search memory. And I'm deleting the word no. It's no longer in my vocabulary. So say it, Lord. Lord. I delete the word no. It is yes and amen for all those in Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay, coffee with Kevin. Coffee with Kevin in the morning. Yeah, yeah, we're going to make some people nervous tomorrow morning. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.